Islands across the sea samplers.com. Today we are going to be looking at the new Necessaire stand from Needle Leads. This is the stand that's used in conjunction with the wonderful and unique Millennium frame. The stand will arrive in this box. Let's have a look at the contents of the box and how we assemble the stand. When we've unpacked the contents of our box, you will notice that there is a black knob screwed into the second hole down. This is purely for packing purposes. It should be unscrewed and removed and repositioned into the stainless steel band below. There's only one tool we need to assemble the stand and that is the Allen key which is found in the little leather hoop on the side of the quadrant. I'm going to demonstrate assembly of the stand from the back so that you have the front view which is the one that you will have when you assemble the stand yourself. The feet have two holes cut in the back. On the bottom these two holes have metal receivers, so it is the metal receivers that are placed face down. We will then take the base plate. It's identical top and bottom, but it does have a front and back. The front is the longer edge and the back is the shorter edge. There are four matching dark brown screws which we use in this stage. They are slotted into the outside holes and then with your fingers or thumbs clamped over the screws to hold them in position, just slot them into the hole. We will now take our Allen key and secure them into position. You don't need any particular strength for doing this. It all works very easy. Don't screw them right down. Just use a sensible amount of pressure It'll feel natural as you're doing it. We don't need husbands for putting our stands together. There we are. So it's as simple as that. We now have our base assembled. We're now going to take the pedestal and attach it to the feet. With the pedestal, you will notice at the back there are two holes drilled out with metal receivers. These won't come into play at this stage because they're for a very exciting new accessory that will come out later this year. And basically this accessory will enable you to attach your iPad or tablet to your stand. The front of the stand has this lovely uh, stainless steel engraved plaque, which identifies it as being a necessary stand and that it's by needle needs. That is the front. I found with this stage it is easier to turn this upside down and just hold it between my legs, take the base which we constructed in the previous step, turn it upside down, take the remaining two dark brown screws and place them in the centre holes, then put my thumb over the top line them up with the screws on the base and then take our allen key and tighten them. It really is so, so simple. Here we are, we have now completed the second step of our assembly. The next stage of assembly involves the quadrant. This is such a simple concept that's been around for hundreds of years, maybe even thousands of years. I remember using this principle in school when doing trigonometry and geometry. It comes out of the box with the two pieces secured by the silver screw. It should just pull apart. Now we're going to attach this to the pedestal. On the pedestal, you have two holes. The first stage of assembly involves the top hole and the next stage involves the bottom hole. We're going to take the quadrant that has the silver screw in, we're going to turn it on its side and then we're going to turn it around and this screw is going to go through the top hole. We're then going to take the second quadrant with the leather loop on the outside, we're going to turn it on its side and then turn it around 
and then that will slide through and we have our two pieces together. We're going to use the medium washer, pop it on the end and then we're going to take one of the large knobs and we're going to screw it into position. Next we're going to take the very large silver screw that has a washer built into the end of it and then we're going to place this through this slot and you remember the second hole that was in our stand. We're just going to slide that through and it should push through. If it's a little bit stiff you can just uh, use your hand to slide it through but the candle wax will help. We're going to then take the very large washer and pop it on the end, the final large knob and screw it into position. These knobs are um, very user friendly. If you've got arthritis or some sort of mobility problems with your hand, you will find they're relatively easy to grip. The next step of assembly, we are going to attach the two supporting arms to the top plate. With the supporting arm, there is a dowel at the bottom and there are two holes at the top. You will notice that on the underneath of these holes that there is a square shaped hole where on the front there is a round hole. We're going to take the two remaining silver screws and you will notice that they actually have a square shape cut out at the top. You need to line those up so that the square slots into the square. The screw and the dowel are facing the same direction. Place it with the dowel and the screw face upwards. Do the same on the next one, lining up your squares. We're now going to take the top plate and you will notice that there is a groove on the top. That groove is at the back. We're going to line up these silver screws to these holes. two small washers left. These washers go on top of the silver screws and then we're going to attach the knobs. Now we're going to attach the top plate to the pedestal. To do that I found it was easiest to turn this upside down and sideways to me. Take the pedestal and we're going to put four screws in these holes and we're going to line those up with the four screws on the underneath of the top plate. We only have four screws left and they're large brass ones. If we slot those into place, put our hand over the top of them and just line them up. And then we use our Allen key to screw them into place. The stand is very, very light. I think it comes in at about uh, 3.1 kilos, which is just over six pounds. It's gonna be great for sort of picking up and moving around the house and popping into the car and carrying to uh, classes. Great, very, very nearly there now. These two back screws, I found it was easier to change the Allen key so that the longest part went into the screws and then you just use the short part uh, to turn it. It's quite close to this um, area to use it the other way around. So we're very, very nearly there now. There's just one final little step to do. And that is to attach these two little brass hooks to the end of our top plate. Needle needs a thought of everything. Um, I work with floss away bags on um, little metal hoops which I just hang from the side and it's also quite handy to pop your scissors on. I'm always losing my scissors so it's nice that they're in a, a place where they, they don't slip down the side of the chair or I end up sitting on them. There we are, we have finished our assembly and it has taken 12 minutes and 12 seconds. Now we're sat at a chair, let's have a look at how we can adjust this stand to suit us rather than us adjust our body to suit the stand. 
we are probably going to be stitching for many hours at a time and we don't want to be in an awkward position where we end up with backache or shoulder ache or a stiff neck. To do that, we're going to alter the height of the stand first and it's very, very easy. All we do is release this bottom knob and then this will slide up and down into the position that suits us. When we find the right position, we just tighten the knob and there we have it. Yeah, that's pretty good for me, I think. Now, the next thing we have to do is release the second knob down and then this will allow us to play with the angle because it will now slide up and down and you can stop that at any position that suits you. I think that might be quite nice for me so I'm going to tighten that off. If you find the right position it might be worth you getting some sticky tape and marking the um, upright and the quadrant with um, you know the position. If you have a couple of different positions around the house um, it will save you flapping around trying to find the perfect position as you move around. You know, you'll know exactly where it is from your markings. Let's have a look at two different size frames. The smallest frame that Needle Needs manufacture is the Little Stitch Wizard. Normally we would use that um, in the crook of our elbow or on the wonderful little Aristo lap stand. But today we'll try it on our floor stand. We're going to alter these arms, bringing them in, so that they fit the little frame. That sits very comfortably on here. Now, let's have a look at a large frame. I've got a current project here. Um, that's probably about a 36 inch frame. I'm not 100% certain, but it's probably somewhere around there. Now, that frame sits very comfortably on the stand. Now I've put this on, I realize that this is actually a tad high for me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna release this and drop it down just an inch or so. Let's try that now. Oh yes, that's much better for me. It gives me lots of flexibility with my legs. Um, I stitch for many hours, so I often want to sort of just wiggle my legs around, get the circulation going. I often have a very bad habit as well of crossing my legs as I stitch. There's plenty of room to do that, and I've got plenty of room to sew two-handed. I'm very, very pleased with this. It's really, really flexible. Let's have a look at some other features. One of the great features of the Millennium Stand is the fact that you can just flip your work over so easily to access the back of your work. It really is just that procedure. No um, turning knobs or flicking things over. It is really so easy and so versatile. Um, there is a great debate about which is the correct way to use the Millennium Frame. There isn't a correct way, it's the way that suits you. A lot of people like to stitch with this being the um, top of their work. I don't like to do that. I like to um, stitch with the top of my work being in this position so that it is the underneath of the fabric that rolls around the bars. That means that the underneath of my stitching is what is resting on the arms. I really wouldn't want the surface of my stitching to be resting on here and rubbing on the side arms. So I use my frame in this position so that the front of my work is on the inside of the bars. That also means as I'm working and I'm stitching, where my wrist is resting on these bars, it is resting on the underneath of the fabric and not on the surface of my embroidery. It doesn't matter how careful you are about washing your hands, you will transfer body oils onto your fabric. The other benefit of using your frame in this position is that it's possible to put your chart here, your scissors, and just rest it on the side of your work, and then this acts as a ledge to keep that in place. 
but again it really is personal preference it's what's right for you following on from my first video on the original necessaire stand i get lots of emails and telephone calls from other stitchers with questions about the product a question i get asked time and time again is will the stand work with my armchair or my sofa that's a difficult one to answer because all our furniture is different with the stand, the feet are approximately an inch and a quarter deep. So if you have an inch and a half clearance between the floor and the bottom of your sofa or armchair, those feet will slide under. The other thing is I have a very deep armchair or I have a very deep sofa. Now, with the stand, you can bring it right the way up to the um, edge of your seat which pushes the arms way past me on this particular chair which is a, you know a fairly deep comfortable chair to work at if the standard arms aren't long enough these um, arms do come in three sizes these are the longest ones and as you will see they do extend um, the reach of the stand by, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six inches. So if you do have a particularly um, deep uh, seat, you know, that is an option for you. Another question I get asked repeatedly is why does it take so long to receive my product? Needle Needs is a small husband and wife concern. They are not a factory. There isn't a production line. These frames and stands um, just don't roll off a machine. They are handcrafted. When you receive your product, you will realise the beautiful finish that goes into these. They are smooth and beautifully turned. They really are heirloom products that are going to last you longer than your stitching lifetime and you will be able to pass these on to your children. Remember, the best things in life are worth waiting for. You will not be disappointed. Another question that I'm asked quite often is how sturdy is the stand? The stand is very sturdy. It really is very well designed, very solid. It takes a fair bit of weight. You know, you can, like obviously you're not going to put all your weight on it, but you know, it really is very, very solid to work with yet it is surprisingly light. I'm not connected with Needle Needs in any way. I'm just a huge fan of their products. I couldn't imagine stitching without using the Millennium Frame or the floor stand or lap stand. I hope in this product review, I have addressed the salient points of the stand, but if you have any other questions, you could telephone me or email me. I'm happy to talk on Skype or FaceTime if you're in the area, you're very, very welcome to call in and have a cup of coffee and you can sit and you can try the products and I could answer any questions that you have. I hope you've enjoyed this video. That's Nicola Parkman from handsacrossthesea samplers.com.